Hi, I'm uh, Sean Lehman, reporter with the Democrat and Chronicle. I'm here with uh, Ernest Fouquet, an associate professor at RIT's uh, School of Mathematical Sciences. This weekend, he's going to host more than 100 uh, undergraduate students for DataFest, which is a, a, a two-day-long competition to, uh, to work with complex data sets and, uh, and solve some real-life problems. And Professor, can you tell me some of the problems that, uh, some of the kind of problems that data science is used uh, to solve? Well, one of the things that is unique with data science uh, is the fact that uh, unlike in the early days of uh, people wrestling with data through mathematics and statistics and computer science nowadays, people are embracing more complex data, data with variety. You see, you, when you hear big data, you hear usually of the, uh, the so-called four Vs of big data. And the V that people tend to think of the most is, is volume because I think big data means there's a lot of data, but it's also big because of variety, because there's different types of data, and there's also the velocity. Mm -hmm. and the data is coming to us now at, at such a high pace because people have different sensors for collecting data. And, uh, but the last one that people have been thinking about lately quite a bit is the so-called veracity of the data. How good is it? Because it's one thing to have a lot of data, but it's something altogether different to have data of good quality so that the inference you perform is valid. And so the kind of data that students will be dealing with are uh, sometimes transactional data. And uh, in the early days of this, they, they dealt with data from crime in the city of uh, Los Angeles mm -hmm. in the first data fest. And uh, last year, I think they were working on uh, data on uh, cars, car sales, to learn the patterns why people buy the cars that they buy and what are the motivation behind it. Mm. And the donor of the data, as we call them, I can't tell the donor right now until the competition starts, but the donor of the data is interested in seeing how young people react in front of this incredible huge amounts of data to extract patterns from them. And so clearly these students come with certain sets of technical skills, programming and and so forth, but is there also a, a, a philosophy behind the, the approach to these large data sets and how to extract meaning out of these large collections of data? That's a very good question, actually, Sean. I think that one of the things that I'm trying to push, uh, the initiatives I'm working on at RIT and in the Greater Rochester in general, is to uh, create the sense that it's not always people with great knowledge in computer science and statistics or mathematics that are called upon to deal with big data. No, the, is it you deal with data. People in this uh, station deal with data. Mm -hmm. Anthropologists deal with data. Historians deal with data. Doctors deal with data. Marketing people deal with data. So what we want is to truly get all youngsters energized because in every field of investigation in their studies, they do gather data. So we have text data, we have all kinds of data. So there's no, we are not, I don't want people to have a sense that you have to be a computer scientist or a statistician or a pure mathematician or a physicist to do this. We want people to use their common sense, their intelligence to find patterns in the data. Even people who in the past only did the so-called qualitative data analysis, mm -hmm. we're calling upon them to feel as though they have a part to play in mm -hmm. this revolution called data science. And I have to imagine that the, that those skills are, are in pretty heavy demand now in the job market. People who are graduating from your, your program at RIT have something to look forward to. Absolutely. In fact, I am from a program of which I'm extremely proud. I am faculty in the graduate statistics program at RIT where I always brag when students call me to say, I want to join your program, what do you have to tell me? I say, well, since I came here eight years at RIT, we have 100% record hmm. in placement. Our students find jobs. I have people call me. We need more people with the skill sets in data science. And uh, like I said earlier, Sean, I think that more people should feel that, in fact, if you think of data science, people usually define data science nowadays as a kind of a unicorn. You can draw a Venn diagram, and in the middle of the Venn diagram, you have the data scientists. What are the three parts of the Venn diagram? One of them is called statistical inference, the other one is called computing, and the other one is called domain knowledge. So I want everyone who manipulates any form of knowledge to realize that on a daily basis they're dealing with data. And you said it best, the demand on data scientists, on people who are using data to do their work better. See, it, we're not saying that data science is going to take away people's job. It's just that as, if you're an anthropologist, if you are a biologist, whatever field you work in, even if you are a writer, or a specialist in literature, mm. you can use the knowledge that you derive from data science to be a better at your job. And because opportunities are opening up for people to use the availability of data to be better at what they do. 
That's I don't know if they answered the question, but what I'm trying to yeah. communicate here is that there are opportunities because I think this is almost like a moment in the history of mankind where people suddenly realize, you know what? We are surrounded by information that could help us be better human, understand our universe better. And because we have ways to collect data, we have opportunities to extract those patterns from the data. So there's a lot of, you hear the word knowledge discovery from data. That doesn't yeah, limit it yeah. to statistics or computer science. Knowledge discovery happens in any field of investigation of humankind. Sure. And that's the reason why I strongly believe this is a very inclusive field. It's of necessity and by design, data science as a field is very multidisciplinary. Yeah. You have, uh, you said over a hundred kids you're expecting to come and compete this weekend from all across the region, not just kids from RIT. No, I want them to come from all around. It's just, unfortunately, this is the first year we're doing Data Fest here. We, some people who have done Data Fest before, they even provided transportation for people to come from slightly outside of the city where the Data Fest was taking place. Mm -hmm. But because this is our first crack at it, we, we are just expecting people from the you know, University of Rochester, Rochester Institute of Technology, my Et university, cetera. of course, yeah. and uh, St. John Fisher, and people from around Greater Rochester are all welcome to come and compete. And by the way, Sean, let me repeat something very interesting about Data Fest. Data Fest is a nationally sanctioned event is sanctioned by the American Statistical Association. Mm -hmm. So by taking part in this event, the candidate, the young undergraduate, is telling the world, I want to take part in the data science revolution. And uh, we intend to give honorable mention and rewards and awards to all the people taking part in it. Of course, there are three main awards of the people who truly win mm -hmm. the, the Data Fest competition, but there's a recognition for all those who take part in it, which I believe, from a point of view of job hunting in the future, it tells the world that this guy, he's interested. He may not have won the conference, uh, the, the, the competition, but he showed, he showed up hmm. and he did something remarkable to earn an honorable mention, so. And you said before, uh, for folks who don't get an opportunity to compete in Data Fest, you've got another event coming up in April? This event has been going around here since uh, I started this event six years ago. It's called the Upstart Conference. It is the conference of the uh, upstate New York chapters of the American Statistical Association. Now, Data Fest right now doesn't allow graduate students to take part. We will have graduate students tomorrow and Friday and Saturday and Sunday, but they'll be coming as consultants to help the youngsters in uh, exploring the data. But at Upstat, graduate students are allowed to compete and we also have a data competition in there. So this, I use this as an opportunity to invite all graduate students and young faculty in our area to come and join us uh, at Canisius College on April 21st and 22nd as we celebrate the sixth annual uh, Upstart Conference. So. Well, thank you very much, Professor, and uh, thank you for telling us about the Data Fest event. And for more on, on that event this weekend and the impact of data science, uh, check us out at uh, democratandchronicle.com.